Good morning. A new ordeal for Kate McCann as she's questioned for 11 hours, emerging from the police station in the early hours of this morning. Toddlers with high blood pressure from too much salt, the latest worrying trend in obese Britain. Johnny Wilkinson, he's got it! And remember this, four years on, can England deliver? Or will injury put a dampener on the whole sporting weekend? <laughs> That's all to come today, Friday, the September the 7th, 2007. Hello, good morning. You're watching the news hour. It's just gone six o'clock. We'll have more on all of those stories and that intriguing shot of Steve Gerrard later in the program. Oh, is that, is that what it was? <laughs> It was a Steve Gerrard doing a good yeah. stretch. Also today. Out across the endless sea, I would die in ecstasy. Filmed by her dad and secretly posted on YouTube. A million hits later, and 15-year-old Chantal Reedman, or Redman, is now being approached by producers. We're going to meet her in 20 minutes' time and find out how to pronounce her surname, isn't it? Isn't it is an excellent Fantastic. voice. No wonder she's had... Uh, yeah. she's so Sounds a bit like me, actually. Absolutely, in the bath. And... Not that I'd know. <laughs> and um, <laughs> pregnant women look away now. Introducing baby Sean. That's him on the left of your picture. He weighed in at 14 pounds, 7 ounces at birth, and he came out naturally. Ouch! Uh, we're meeting Sean and his very brave mum a little bit later on. First, Claire is up in red car with the weather. Claire, oh, pretty. Very. And the weather. Isn't it beautiful this morning? Isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Yes, I'm at the red car beach this morning. I'll tell you why a little bit later, why I'm down here. But we're bringing you this morning beautiful shots of the beach and the horizon and showing you that actually it's going to be a pretty good weekend for most of us. In fact, Friday is going to be the warmest day of the weekend and most of us will be seeing some sunshine today, although there is some mist and fog around this morning. Always more cloud across the north and west of Scotland with some patchy rain and drizzle, tending to die out through the afternoon and elsewhere. The clouds should break up, allowing some sunshine across the country as we head through the afternoon. I'll give you more details, though, in around 25 minutes back to the studio. Claire, thanks very much. The mother of Madeleine McCann has undergone 11 hours of questioning by police in Portugal. Her lawyer has stressed that Kate McCann is still being treated as a witness. Her husband, Jerry, is due to be interviewed again later today. Kate Evans reports. Kate McCann looked close to tears facing press and onlookers as she left the police station in the early hours of this morning. She was questioned for around 11 hours. The need for the interview to be translated, making it a laborious and time-consuming process. Her lawyer read a short statement in Portuguese, saying she was still being treated as a witness, contradicting some newspaper reports that Madeline's parents were about to be designated as formal suspects in the case. The four-year-old disappeared from her family's holiday apartment in nearby Praia de Luz on May the 3rd. The investigation had seemed to be stalled, but it's thought that forensic analysis of samples found in the apartment may have given police new leads. Media and public interest in the case remains as high as ever, with a large crowd of reporters and local people gathering outside the station ahead of Kate's departure. It's likely her husband, Jerry, will face a similar barrage when he arrives for questioning later today. Kate Evans reporting there. Let's uh, catch up on the rest of the news. Here's Priya. Thank you, John. A new video message from Osama bin Laden to the American people is to be released to coincide with the sixth anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. It comes just days after the authorities in Germany said they'd foiled a major terrorism plot linked to al-Qaeda. Well, Sue Jameson is at Britain's intelligence service headquarters. Sue. Yes, good morning. Security services in this country and many others waiting to see if this video does definitely materialise. Sometimes it's been posted on the web and these things haven't happened. But if the video message does come out in the next 72 hours, it'll be the first time bin Laden has spoken like this since October 2004. The last time bin Laden was seen, he was sending out a message to voters in the US presidential elections. This time, the website says it's to mark the sixth anniversary of the September the 11th attacks. In previous messages, the al-Qaeda leader's beard was streaked with grey, but in a photo apparently taken from this new video, it's black. Dying his beard may be bin Laden's response to recent rumours that he was dead. There have been several audio messages, the last one just over a year ago. 
Since the September 11th attacks, bin Laden has evaded capture, and his terror network Al-Qaeda continues to pose a serious threat to security in the U.S. and Europe. Meanwhile, police in Germany are hunting 10 suspects believed to have held, helped three men being held over an alleged massive bomb plot. Sue, thank you. Young children are eating so much salt that they're suffering from high blood pressure, according to a new report. Health campaigners are urging parents to cut down their children's daily salt intake to prevent them from suffering from heart disease or strokes later in life. Two teenage boys are due in court today, charged with the murder of a 23-year-old man who died after allegedly being attacked over litter. Everin Anil fell into a coma when he hit his head on a pavement after confronting a gang of youths in South London. He died eight days later. Two British soldiers killed in an explosion in southern Afghanistan have been named. Privates Ben Ford from Chesterfield and Damien Wright from Mansfield died in a fight with the Taliban in Helmand province. Two official reports into the recent foot and mouth outbreak are being published today. They're expected to say that faulty drainage pipes at a nearby, a nearby laboratory could have released the disease and workers renovating the labs may have spread foot and mouth on their car tyres. The funeral of opera star Luciano Pavarotti will be held in northern Italy tomorrow. Hundreds of people gathered in Modena's main square to pay their respects. His body is lying in state in the city's cathedral. Rescue teams looking for the missing American adventurer Steve Fawcett have expanded their search area to 10,000 square miles. He went missing on Monday night while flying solo over the Nevada desert. Look at what's on our website this morning. Why depression can do more damage to your health than physical illnesses. How we're turning into a nation of big savers and hit band athlete. Join us for a webcast at 9.30. All that and more on GM.TV. It's 6.07, now back to Penny and John. Thanks very much, Peter. Let's have a quick look at the front pages, and that's on the Times uh, saying that a hardline sect controls 600 of Britain's uh, 1,350 mosques, the leading preacher calling on Muslims to shed blood. The Independent say, talking about Switzerland, home apparently to a new form of extremism that alarmed the United Nations. Um, proposals for Ukrainian new laws that target the country's immigrants have been condemned as unjust and racist. Uh, the Guardian says, says that Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth and WWF have described a consultation over nuclear power um, as the, the consultation as a sham. New nuclear route as green groups pull out. And finally, the Daily Telegraph saying mortgages set to rise as crisis grips the markets. And uh, all the rest uh, lead on the McCann, sorry, that's front page of the minute. Suspects uh, is a headline, although the police have not said that, actually. Uh, did you sedate Maddie is a headline in the Sun and in the Daily Mail. They're trying to, to set me up. Now, are we on the brink of another Cold War? For the second time in three weeks, RAF tornadoes were scrambled to intercept eight Russian military planes. It happened over the North Atlantic as the Russian Tupolev bombers were heading towards British airspace. So is it sabre-rattling or is it something more serious? Well, I'm joined now by the author and Russian expert Martin McCauley. Good morning to you. Good morning. What, what would you go for, sabre-rattling or something else? I think it's sabre-rattling because the Russian bear is back. It's been away since 1991. Russia was a poor country in the 1990s. Uh, now they've got oil wealth uh, and they feel themselves strong again. They want to demonstrate they're back in the game. They're great power. They want to be respected. But remember, these planes are old planes. Uh, these are not new planes. Uh, and the question is, are they carrying nuclear weapons? Are they carrying anything dangerous? And if they are? That would be uh, obviously a great concern. Uh, I mean, there was, um, you know, they're, they're saying that, you know, saying that, that, that it, it's sabre-rattling, but um, I fail to see what, what the point is in sabre-rattling with the, it. The, the point is to make sure that people respect Russia. Uh, we now have in Eastern Europe, uh, the Americans want to put an anti-missile shield in Poland and the Czech Republic. Uh, the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, said the other day, it's a red line which we cannot uh, step over. We will not allow that. In other words, our defence interests, our security interests are so important that we will not allow that. And you must respect, you must respect our security interests. Uh, and what Russia is really trying to achieve is really to make sure that Eastern Europe is in fact uh, their security zone and that's respected. And uh, uh, the North Atlantic and so on is also part of their security zone uh, and everyone has to respect that. If an accident happened during one of these interceptions, 
What would what would happen then? It would be an international crisis uh, because then the if if uh, one of the Russian aircraft uh, collided with say a British aircraft and a NATO aircraft, the Russians would say that was aggression. They would say they would not accept it as an accident. Uh, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, a Suhoi 24 fighter crashed in the Russian Far East, and then they grounded all the Suhoi 24 aircraft. So therefore, these are old aircraft, and one hopes that they're really fit for flying. Yeah, somebody the was talking about the, the whiff of mothballs about them. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm, I was surprised, and I'm sure many people were surprised, that there's only a 12-mile exclusion zone around Britain. Well, that's an international law. Um, in fact, that goes back to the days when uh, you thought that uh, international waters were secure. Britain had a very powerful navy, so therefore uh, you wanted a very small exclusion around all the countries so that you could actually uh, go between, uh, uh, go in the water between countries and so on. Uh, countries now would like 30, 50 miles, 100 kilometres, in fact, they would like. Because if you look at the Russians, the Russians are claiming half of the Arctic. <laughs> They're extending their zone halfway across the Arctic. Martin, we have to leave it there. Dr Martin McCauley. Thanks very much indeed. Now, no matter what your game, football, rugby, cricket or Formula One, it's a massive weekend of sport for all our British teams and participants. In a moment, we'll talk things rugby with uh, Kenny Logan, but first to the Mirror's Oliver Holt, who's outside uh, Wembley Stadium for us this morning. Good to see you, uh, Oliver. Uh, the word is that England have got so many injuries that the fans are being asked to take their boots along. Yeah, well, that'd be a nice idea, John, but, um, well, actually, it probably wouldn't be a nice idea, but um, it's, I don't think it's quite that bad. I think if you look at the team that we should still be able to put out, it's a team that should beat Israel. We, you know, we, we have got a lot of injuries, but we have still got a lot of good players, and if you, um, if you rack up the amount of money that they've cost in transfers, then you'd, you'd get to um, a fair few hundred million, I think. So um, we should still be good enough to beat Israel, even with, even with our catalogue of injuries. Yeah, but can Stevie Gerrard really play with a broken toe? And if he does, what will his manager at Liverpool think about that? Well, that's a big debate, John, I suppose, whether to, whether to give him a pain-killing injection or not. The other thing to think of, and I think we have to take these two games together, we've got Israel here on Saturday, we've also got Russia, as you know, here next Wednesday. In many ways, Russia is the bigger game, so we don't really want to get ourselves in a situation where Steve Gerrard plays against Israel and is then hobbled for the Russia game, because we have to win both these games, so it's a very difficult call for McLaren. If we don't make it, and boy, we should, but if we don't, that's curtains for McLaren, isn't it? Yes, definitely. I, th I don't think there's any, any other answer to that. I, I mean, I think, you know, if, if we drop points in these next two games, then he will carry on until the end of the qualifying campaign, until it's mathematically impossible for us to qualify. But I think if we don't qualify, he, he, can't, he can't stay on. I think the outcry will, will be too great. But we've still got a chance. I, you know, we've, I, I, I would put it 50-50 at the moment. We haven't got as good a chance as uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland, though. They're in a much stronger position, aren't they? They are, and, and, and they've got um, big weekends coming up as well. I mean, they, both Scotland and Northern Ireland have got something going for them that we haven't, which is momentum. And um, they've put in some great performances in the qualifying campaign so far. Um, Northern Ireland, really big test for them, I think, away in Latvia, away in Iceland. Um, both games in their current form that they should win, you'd have to say, because those two teams are at the bottom of their group. So if they can come through those, then we're going to be talking about them as real possibilities to qualify. OK, Oliver, thanks very much indeed. Enjoy your week. And with pressure and injuries uh, blighting this weekend on all fronts, cast your minds back to happier days, a spectacular moment in English sporting history. Who could forget it? Yes, nearly four years ago, it was that Johnny Wilkinson last-minute drop goal which sealed the Rugby World Cup for England. What a day that was. Joined now by a former Scotland international, Kenny Logan. Um, I know you're Scottish, obviously, but <laughs> it was a fantastic day, wasn't it, for, yeah, it was, for, for rugby generally? It was great for rugby. I mean, it's good to... I said, the impact it had on Britain when it came back, it was great for all the nations. So, for the six nations, everybody wanted to play against the world champions. And since then, it's, it's gone downhill for England, really. It has gone downhill for England. But let's just, let's just think positively for a second and cast our minds back to that homecoming. I was there at Terminal 4 at Heathrow. It was sensational. Be warned, by the way, some flash photography in these pictures. But, I mean, who could forget 
Can we see it? Uh, who, who, could, who could forget? There we go. Who could forget the, this unbelievable welcome they got? And as you say, Kenny, rugby has been transformed by this, hasn't it? I mean, ITV is now paying £30 million for the rights, three times more than we paid four years ago. It's a, it's a big, big business now. Yeah, it's a big business. I mean, you know all the investors back home, the sponsors back home, that have put a lot of money into these players. And, you know, the, the, that, the atmosphere that day it was phenomenal. I mean, I remember watching it, I couldn't believe the sort of homecoming they were getting, but they, they brought the World Cup back, which has yeah. been living on the other side of the world for the last 20 well, years. Good for England, good for Britain too. Fantastic, yeah, it's great for rugby all round. Right, but as you say, since then, as far as England are concerned, it's a, a very different story, hasn't it? I mean, we've no ch have we any chance of winning this? Well, I think, you or know, retaining it, you've, always got, you've always got a chance in the World Cup. They're, you know, the big game for them, everybody says it's South Africa, but Samoa are going to be there. Um, Somebody's predicting that some are going to kick yeah, out. Yeah, right? the some might get kicked out. But I, don't, I think England will get to the quarterfinals. Mm. And if they're big one at the quarterfinals, who they're going to play, if they can get a, nice, a, a nicer game and try and get through it, I think they can get to probably semi final. Mm. If they get to semi final, they've had a great tournament and batted well above their station, really. Scotland, Wales, and Ireland? Um, Ireland have well, gone into the tournament pretty f good from all. Thought, everybody thought they were playing really well, but mm. their, their warm up games have been poor. They're, they look. A bit tentative. Scotland have sort of risen, risen from the dead after the Six Nations, mm. and they've got a really good chance of definitely. You know, everybody used to think it was New Zealand would be the big game, but it's now actually Italy, mm. and the competition is getting bigger now. There's more teams putting pressure on the big boys. Italy have really come on, haven't they? Yeah, they have. So that's Scotland's big game, Italy, and if they can get that as a quarter final, probably against France. Mm. Uh, they've beaten France in the past, but France are looking very good. New Zealand to win it. Uh, New Zealand to win it, but I think France will be there or thereabouts. I think, you know, if you speak to most nations that have played in the World Cup who, who are actually in front of their home crowd, they just play that bit more, uh, more strength in their game, and I think France will be right at the end. I think they might pit them, but New Zealand, it's their turn, isn't it? They've been, Feels like they've it. They've been asking for a while. Feels like it. Kenny, look, good to see you. Thanks very much you for too. coming in. A big dilemma for sports fans. We've got a, a, a lad here who produces our, our sport. He's going to have three tellies in front of him this, this weekend so he can watch the cricket, the rugby and the soccer. And you can watch uh, England's first game of uh, rugby in the Rugby World Cup against the USA here on ITV at 4.45. My goodness, I'm going to have to have four then. All you the should full... leave the country. No, exactly. Yeah. All the sport Just... and a film. Exactly. <laughs> You're watching the news hour on GMTV. This morning's headlines. The mother of Madeleine McCann has undergone 11 hours of questioning by police in Portugal. Her husband, Jerry, will be interviewed later today. A new video message from Osama bin Laden to the American people is to be released to coincide with the sixth anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. And hundreds of people have gathered in Modena in Italy to pay their respects to Luciano Pavarotti ahead of his funeral tomorrow. Now, we all know that too much salt is bad for us, but shocking new research reveals today that children as young as four have high blood pressure from eating too much of it. This is 1,825 grams of salt, which is the recommended maximum for most children, for the whole of the year. But this... Ooh, look is what most children eat, which is almost double the recommended amount. My goodness, it's quite heavy. Possibly the Kilner jar as well. Uh, now, many of us uh, know by now that these are all high in salt. Uh, but did you know that a mug of hot chocolate or two biscuits can contain as much as one packet of ready salted crisps? And beans on toast has the same amount of salt as five packets of crisps. Well, parents are now being urged to cut down radically on their children's intake, something that Debbie here has been trying to do for her son, Lee. And Joe Bunn, a nutritionist, is here too. Good morning to you all. Now, Lee, you're, you're 13, I think, are you? Yeah. And you've got high blood pressure. Yeah, well, I did have. You, di you did have high blood pressure. Yeah. What, what sort of things were you eating when you hi had high blood pressure? Oh. Pizzas. Lots of pizzas? Pizzas, yeah. everything. All the wrong food. Right, lots of sal and, and, and lots of things that actually tasted salty. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. mostly it was things like sav savoury sort of snacks and yeah. sa sa savoury food. Yeah. And and Debbie, when did you find out about Lee's high blood pressure? Um, when I took him to the doctors, um, he was he was concerned about his weight, so we got him tested, and that's when we found out. So how much how much did you weigh then, Lee? Um, oh, I think about ninety-seven kilograms. Was that in uh, old money? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's about sort of like 13 stone, yeah, I think. Yeah. About 13 stone. And then you went and, and, and they said too much salt, high yeah. blood pressure. Yeah. And so what do you eat now? 
Um, I eat more like regular meals like stews and that now. Fruit, I, fruit and veg, yeah. five a day. I Lots of fruit and veg. Yeah. And home cooked stews yeah. or and everything and, home cooked. So it's all home cooked. Um, now. Joe, the, the, the problem is, of course, is that it is just so easy with a busy life to just grab something that's quick, isn't it? That's right. And most of the salt in your diet actually comes from processed foods like the ones we've been talking about. So the kind of things you want to avoid are the processed lunch, lunchtime snacks, that kind of thing. Make a sandwich, put those in the lunch boxes. I think, I suppose most people, the, the thing that most people will be surprised about is the fact that somebody as young as Lee, who's 13, could have had high blood pressure. That's right. It's actually um, a number of children that um, are missed in terms of the amount of blood pressure that they high blood pressure that they have, and it's all to do with um, different age and different heights and different weights. So it's very difficult for people to realise um, what blood pressure they should be aiming for. And just remind us, high blood pressure can lead to what? It can lead to strokes and heart attacks in uh, later life. Right. Now, we contacted the Food and Drink Federation. It says it's made huge progress in reducing levels of salt in food. It said our members provide salt equivalent information on packs, as well as the legally required sodium information where practicable. There are also incre they're also increasingly providing an at-a-glance information on salt at the front of the packs to help busy shoppers. Ha have you found that, Debbie? I mean, do, are you, a, are you an, a, a now a, um, a born-again food label yeah, shopper? Not really, because I don't tend to buy a lot of processed things. Um, but I do tend to look at like the reduced salt rather than just like normal things. Right. So. But, you do, but when you take off the pack, you know, I know you say you don't buy very much processed food, but when you do, do you actually look at all the stuff on the side? Generally, yeah. I try to. You generally yeah. try to. And what about you, Lee? Do you do much shopping yourself? <laughs> Not no. really. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't. And you certainly don't buy Chris and, and, and that sort of thing no, anymore. anymore. So, Joe, what are parents supposed to feed their children? Well, really, you need to look at the um, the packaging and sort of choose the lower salt varieties because there are lower options out there now. And things like bread and breakfast cereals are all things that people don't realise have got salt in there. So it's really looking for the the lower versions and looking at those front of pack labels and using those. See, I think a lot of people just don't know that it's in things like biscuits and, and, and that sort of thing, sweet things that you don't expect salt to be in. That's right. I mean, we found some popcorn that had um, nearly 70% of a young child's maximum daily intake in, in it. So it's really sort of just really looking at the labels. And once you get a feel for what um, what does have salt in there, you can actually just go I'm for assuming the... that's salted popcorn, though. No, it wasn't. It was the sweet flavoured. The sweet flavour has the, Which is quite surprising indeed. That yeah, is so. quite surprising. No, no easy way to tell if a product has a lot of salt. No, but I think once you get a, a feel for what, what does have the salt in there, then you can go for the lower salt options. And there is always generally ones out there that you can, that you can choose. Jo, thank you very much. Debbie and Lee, thank you to, for coming in. And you can find out if you're eating too much salt and get the facts on which foods to avoid on the website gm.tv. Still to come, all the weekend weather from Claire, who's in a beautiful looking wreck. Look at that sunrise oh. there this morning, like uh, an oil painting. Absolutely fabulous. That's Red Car up in the northeast of England, where Claire, Claire will be uh, doing her forecast from in just a moment's time. Fantastic. And we'll be live to Portugal for the latest in the Madeleine McCann inquiry. Now, Jerry McCann faces questioning by police. Yes, and we meet the 15 year old girl who's finding fame via the YouTube. You know, I think it's about time we applauded all that's brilliant about Britain. So why not join me and a few choice celebrities for an afternoon chat every day and we can talk about anything you want. I'll have music, experts giving advice on all sorts of stuff and if you've an opinion on anything, I want to hear it. Oh, and I'm not completely hanging up my trowel. I'll talk about gardening too, if you like. The Alan Titchmar Show, weekdays at 3 on ITV1. I can't believe we've got so much in the show. I can't believe it either. How are we going to fit it all in? Well, I going to have to get you. Speaking like this. What are you talking about? Speaking like what? Speaking like this, without any pauses. Mm, yeah, OK. But how are we going to get from one part of the studio to another part? This quick. Easy. <laughs> but what about the bits where we have to change clothes? I've got an idea. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't laugh like that. Laugh like what? Laugh like that. It takes up too much time. How about this? <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get everything in the show now. A jam-packed new series of Saturday Night Takeaways, Saturday at 8.25. 
It's the beginning of the end for status quo. The Legends, about to release their 33rd album, are rocking all over the UK and into the GMTV studio to perform live. Whatever you want, they can deliver. Status quo, Tuesday, GMTV. Welcome back now then. A 15-year-old singer has won an army of fans after her dad secretly filmed her and put the video on YouTube. I'll be talking to uh, would-be star, well, she's a star already, really, Chantal Redman, uh, in her first TV interview. I'm sure there'll be many more in just a tick, but first, let's take a look at her in action. We're soaring, flying, there's not a star in heaven that we can breathe. What a fantastic voice. Well, Chantelle, as you can see, joins me now from the beach, uh, close to her home up in Reykjavik. Chantelle, congratulations. You sing beautifully. Have Thank you, you very much. When did you, when did you first realise you had such a fabulous voice? Oh, I used to sing along with my dad's records when I was little all the time, and they used to tell us I was good, and then I used to go in competitions and stuff, so... I'm sorry, I've got a bit of a bad voice at the minute. I've been singing too much. <laughs> I think I think you sound like me. I, I sound like that every morning, love. Don't worry about it. Now then, um, dads, <laughs> yeah. generally speaking, and I'm one of them, embarrass their children. Were you embarrassed by your dad uh, secretly putting this on YouTube? Not embarrassed. A bit, a bit shocked, to tell you the truth, but it's it's for the best. A good outcome came out of it, so I'm quite I'm quite pleased with them now. <laughs> I will bet you are. I mean, you can't possibly have imagined yeah. you were going to get so much interest. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't think it would be like this, no. You, you've had almost a million hits, is that right? <clears throat> yeah, just under a million, yeah. Uh, uh, astonishing. And presumably, you're now getting offers from people who want to manage you and make you into a full-time, big-time star. Yeah, I am, actually, yeah. <laughs> and w what are you saying to those people, Chantel? Well, we don't know whether they're real or if they're just... We're not sure yet. My dad's going to look into them and see what happens, so hopefully one day, you never know. OK, well, let's just remind people of, uh, of how good you are. Let's just have another clip of you singing, because I think you're terrific. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> no, ah, I've given it away now. I thought we got another clip of you singing. Well, we should, we should have, actually, but because you're so good. But never mind. <laughs> that was actually someone who might be a competitor for you, wasn't it? We were looking at your oh, little yeah, brother. Yeah. Yes, you can't see it, of course. We were looking at your yes. little brother. It was coming on strong as well. Oh, I messed course. that up completely. My apologies for that. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, he's lovely. I love him. And, and is, he, is he really a good singer? So far, yeah, and he's only two. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Now then, X Factor, is that a prospect? It could be a possibility, yeah. Um, I've, I've thought about it, yeah, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't, so... We'll see. We'll see what happens. Not sure yet. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for you, love, uh, because uh, you, des you deserve you. success. Keep practising. I hope the throat uh, clears up. My apologies to your little brother. We'll see him a little, little, little bit you. later in the programme, I'm sure, uh, giving it his best. Okie dokie. Take care. Right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know we're talking a bit later on about the baby who, weighs, um, who weighed 14 yes. pounds. But look, how about that? Ten weeks. It's <laughs> Ross Abbott. <laughs> it's, it's Ross Abbott. <laughs> no, Ross Abbott is down there. I see you, Jimmy. Hey. <laughs> yes. Well, it's that a baby is... see you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> a wee, a wee see you, Jimmy. It's great. Isn't That's it? amazing. Is it, uh, how many weeks old? Ten. Ten, Ten weeks old. Ten well, weeks old. I, th I think there might be a redhead. Yes, it is. <laughs> Fantastic weekend ahead of weather, and Claire is in red car just along the beach there. Claire. It's absolutely stunning this morning, isn't it, Penny? Now, the reason why I'm down in Redcar, not only for its beautiful sunrise and beaches, well, this beach was actually fe featured in the film Atonement. Atonement featured at the Venice Film Festival to raving reviews. We saw Kira Knightley in the studio yesterday. She plays a Cecilia in the film. And this beach here actually depicts 
Dunkirk in the 1940s. Now, the working title production company searched high and low for a beach in a town which looked like Dunkirk in the 1940s, and they came across Red Car. Great news for the Teesiders because there were a thousand jobs going as extras. And if you go and see the film this weekend, it's on this weekend, you'll be able to see this beach in northeast England and also one of the terrace houses in um, Red Car because it was converted into a French bar. Isn't that lovely? So that's a nice little story for you. Let's take a look at the weather now. GMTV Weather, sponsored by Nestle Cereals. Oh, oh. Cold rain for the whole family every morning. It's a lovely morning here down in Red Car, Cleveland Red Car, and it's going to be a stunning day here. This is probably the best of the weather today. We're seeing some clear skies this morning, although there's some mist and murk around, just dotted around the country. Uh, Northern Ireland's seeing some fog this morning and elsewhere, but it should lift and burn off. We're seeing more in the way of cloud across western areas of Scotland, and that will give a little bit of patchy rain during the morning into the afternoon. But generally speaking, the cloud will break up. Some brighter skies this morning down towards South Wales as well as the West Country. So through the afternoon then any patchy rain across western scotland will clear away to the western highlands so most places here becoming dry although there'll still be a lot of cloud for northern ireland you'll have a fine afternoon to come with 22 degrees celsius as your high and eastern areas of scotland always seeing always seeing more in the way of sunshine as well as northeast england heading further south it's a similar situation really the cloud will break up at times and you'll see some fine and dry weather the highest temperature today probably 24 25 celsius uh flintshire yesterday in Wales saw a 26, can you believe that? So some warm weather through the first part of September. And that's how we see this weekend. I think it could turn a little bit fresher, but most of us seeing some sunshine through the weekend. Uh, tomorrow, what you're seeing is it was a similar situation to today, really. Most of us seeing some sunny spells as the cloud breaks up, allowing the blue sky to come through. Always more cloud again across northern and western parts of Scotland and clipping the far north of Northern Ireland. And as you can see here, we're seeing a little bit more cloud just clipping the northeast of England later on in the day could give the odd spot or two of rain. Come Sunday, most of us seeing some fine and dry weather with some sunshine across England and Wales and Northern Ireland for a time. But then we're seeing more cloud across Scotland and Northern Ireland gradually sinking its way southwards. And that means more cloud eventually moving down towards Northern England. So we head through to next week with some showers to follow. Then things brighten up and dry up again with some fine temperatures. Here's your summary. Get the weekend outlook for your postcode on our website. GM.TV. Good morning. It's a smidge off uh, 6.30. It's just a bit later. It's Friday, September the 7th. Yes, you're watching the news out here on GMTV. In the next uh, half hour, another ordeal for Kate McCann as police question her for 11 hours over Madeline's disappearance. And can England deliver four years on or will injury and illness put pay to sporting success across the board this weekend. More stretching needed. And we'll be meeting the newborn baby, weighing in at a whopping 14 pounds, seven ounces at birth. And no mum did not have a cesarean. Poor woman. That's uh, all to come on today's news out. But first, uh, the mother of Madeleine McCann has undergone 11 hours of questioning by police in Portugal. Her lawyer has stressed that Kate McCann is still being treated as a witness. Her husband, Jerry, is, uh, Ge Jerry is due to be uh, interviewed again later today. Richard Gaysford is down there for us. Uh, Richard, what can you tell us? Kate McCann looked close to tears facing press and onlookers as she left the police station in the early hours of this morning. She was questioned for around 11 hours, the need for the interview to be translated, making it a laborious and time-consuming process. Her lawyer read a short statement in Portuguese saying she was still being treated as a witness, contradicting some newspaper reports that Madeleine's parents were about to be designated as formal suspects in the case. The four-year-old disappeared from her family's holiday apartment in nearby Praia de Luz on the May the 3rd. The investigation had seemed to be stalled, but it's thought that forensic analysis of samples found in the apartment and their car may have given police new leads. Media and public interest in the case remains as high as ever, with a large crowd of reporters and local people gathering outside the station ahead of Kate's departure. It's likely her husband, Jerry, will face a similar barrage when he arrives for questioning later today. A report from Richard Gaysford. Let's get this morning's other news stories now from Priya. Thanks, Penny. 
A new video message from Osama bin Laden to the American people is to be released to coincide with the sixth anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. The announcement was made on an Islamist website where Al-Qaeda frequently posts messages. Bin Laden hasn't been seen on video for nearly three years. Young children are eating so much salt they're suffering from high blood pressure, according to a new report. Health campaigners are urging parents to cut down their children's daily salt intake. Jackie Kabler is in Somerset for us this morning. Jackie. Good morning, yes. Quite shocking, isn't it, that children who eat too much salt do end up with high blood pressure. That goes on to lead to high blood pressure in adults, which of course leads to all sorts of health problems like heart attacks and strokes. Now, it's pretty obvious that snacks like crisps are going to be high in salt, but it's not always that easy. And Lynette's here with her daughter, Brooke. Um, you've got three children. You know it's quite difficult, isn't it, to keep salt in their diet down? Yeah, I mean, when they're babies, you give them baby food, the strict government guidelines, and it outlines exactly what's in it, the right nutrients, etc. As soon as they hit one, you start feeding them the same food that you eat and the packaging is aimed at adults and the contents of everything is aimed at an adult so you have to kind of try and figure out what's what what's mm. in it and it's not really clear what a child should have no it's difficult isn't it and also the problem is that some foods that you wouldn't expect are actually high in salt a cup of hot chocolate for example has actually got the equivalent salt of a regular packet of crisps two digestive biscuits also have as much salt as a packet of crisps and if you look over here this looks like a fairly healthy snack. Half a tin of beans on two slices of buttered toast has the same amount of salt as five packets of crisps. And these instant noodles that are quite popular for snacks, again, as much salt as six packets of crisps. A child of ten should have just five grams a day, a child of six, three grams a day, so it's really important to read the labels. It's really important, doctors say, to avoid children getting high blood pressure too young in life. Indeed. Thanks, Jackie. Two official reports into the recent foot and mouth outbreak are being published today. They're expected to say that faulty drainage pipes at a nearby laboratory could have released the disease and workers renovating the labs may have spread foot and mouth on their car tyres. Two British soldiers killed in an explosion in southern Afghanistan have been named. Privates Ben Ford from Chesterfield and Damien Wright from Mansfield died in a fight with the Taliban in Helmand province. The funeral of opera star Luciano Pavarotti will be held in northern Italy tomorrow. Hundreds of people gathered in Modena's main square to pay their respects. His body is lying in state in the city's cathedral. Rescue teams looking for the missing adventurer Steve Fawcett have expanded their search area to 10,000 square miles. He went missing on Monday night while flying solo over the Nevada desert. On to some sport now. An England boss, Steve McLaren, is missing 12 big-name players through injury for the side's crucial Euro 2008 qualifier tomorrow against Israel. And the home teams are also about to kick off their Rugby World Cup campaigns. Jonathan Swain is at Wembley Stadium. Jonathan. Thanks, Pro. Well, I'm standing on uh, Olympic Way this morning, and this is a game against Israel that really has to go England's way. Nothing less than uh, a win against them, really, and they really will struggle to qualify for the European Championships uh, next year. The pressure really is on uh, Steve McLaren as well this morning. Some of the newspapers beginning to compare him to the failed England manager, uh, Graham Taylor. So a lot of pressure on McLaren. He also has lots of injury worries as well, as you've been saying. Uh, the big question is, will Steven Gerrard play? He's got a, an injured toe. Should they give him an injection? to help him get through the 90 minutes, but that just have longer-term health implications. Also, uh, Owen Hargreaves as well, he's on the uh, injury list. He's another key player, and that's a big disappointment uh, for the side going into the game against Israel here tomorrow. And Israel, of course, are going to be no pushover. They're full of confidence. They're quite disappointed that they only managed to get a draw against England when they played uh, in Tel Aviv earlier on this year. Well, putting the round ball aside to one moment, let's bring in the uh, oval-shaped ball because it is the uh, start of the Rugby World Cup in France this weekend and uh, you remember four years ago England returned back to uh, back home at Heathrow with uh, to a uh, hero's welcome lots of flash photography in these pictures it's very unlikely that's going to happen again this time round. England really will struggle through uh, this World Cup. They play the United States uh, on Saturday. Of course, Wales play Canada this weekend and Scotland play Portugal. If you're a sports fan, it's going to be a busy weekend for you. Jonathan, thank you. And on our website this morning, why depression can do more damage to your health than physical illnesses. How we're turning into a nation of big spenders and hit band athlete. Join us for a webcast at 9.30. All that and more on GM.TV. It's now 6.38. Here's what's happening where you are. Thanks, Priya. Good morning. The main stories here in the northwest.
first, ahead of the first anniversary of his murder, police are pledging to catch the killer of Manchester schoolboy Jesse James. On Sunday, it's exactly a year since the 15-year-old was gunned down in Broadfield Park in Moss Side. So far, despite numerous appeals, detectives haven't charged anyone and have made only two significant arrests, which came following information given at the recent inquest into his death. We will solve this crime. It might take us another year, it might take us another month, we don't know. But I'm quite sure that the, the willingness is still present in GMP and that community. Five youths are due before Burnley magistrates this morning, charged with the murder of a 20-year-old woman in a park in Lancashire. Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend were attacked as they walked through Stubby Lee Park in Baycup last month. She suffered head and facial injuries and later died after falling into a coma. Police in North Wales are set to announce new developments in the hunt for the murderer of a 90-year-old woman. This weekend marks the second anniversary of the death of Elsie Hughes. She died after being found in the living room of her home near Wrexham in 2005. New figures out show the number of people being treated for HIV in the Northwest is at an all-time high. Over 4,700 people are known to be having treatment. That's up 13% on previous year's figures. The number of new cases has dropped by 2%, though. On to rugby and ahead of their first World Cup game with the US tomorrow, the England team have taken part in a wreath-laying ceremony at the Somme battlefield in northern France. It was the idea of Lancashire teacher Paul Garlington, who believes paying respects to those who died during the first World War will inspire the team on the pitch. I just think that these guys were prepared to put their bodies on the line to save the country. It's, uh, you know, it's not something we go through, and it's, there's no point in trying to equate what goes on the rugby field, what goes on the battlefield, because they're just miles and miles and miles apart. Finally, on tonight's Granada reports, we'll have more on the latest sport to hit our region. Over the years, our reporter Paul Crone has given you an insight into toe wrestling, faggot flinging and waiter racing. Tonight, he'll be telling you all about the first ever gravy wrestling championships. Be watching from six to find out more. That's it for now. I'm back at five past seven in a moment. We'll return to Penny and John, but first a look at the region's weather. Be ready for all changing light conditions. Here's the weather forecast. Brought to you by Transitions Lenses. The skies will brighten up through the morning, but in the meantime, there's some low cloud mist and fog patches around to start the day. Later, most places will be dry and bright, and in the sunnier spots, we could see temperatures up to 22 degrees Celsius. Welcome back to the news hour. Let's take a quick look at the morning papers. The Independent talks about Switzerland, known as a haven of peace and neutrality, but today, uh, home to a new extremism that's alarmed the United Nations. Uh, full report on that in The Independent. Uh, the Times has a story saying that uh, almost half of Britain's mosques are under the control of a hardline Islamic sect, uh, which uh, leading preachers, uh, well, which condemn Western values, ba basically. Uh, and in The Guardian, an interesting story saying that uh, Britain's leading environmental groups are poised to formally withdraw from a government consultation. They're not happy with the, gay, the way in which the government are presenting their arguments. And uh, all the tabloids, most of them concentrating on uh, the fact that Kate McGann has been uh, questioned again for 11 hours. Uh, they refused point blank to tell them why. Both now fear that today they will be named as suspects. The Sun did you sedate Maddie? That's one of the uh, questions. The Daily Mail, they're trying to set me up. So Kate McGann uh, actually looking gaunt and exhausted as she left a Portuguese police station in the early hours of this morning. After 11 hours of questioning, she didn't speak to the large crowd of press and on the onlookers, but her lawyer stressed that she was still being questioned as a witness. Well, her husband, Jerry, will be questioned at the same police station this afternoon, and Richard uh, Gaysford is there outside that p police station in Portimao. Uh, Richard, you were there when Kate emerged last night. Yes, uh, good morning, Penny. And uh, she had every right to look exhausted because she'd arrived here, first of all, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, Jerry dropped her off here in the car. She walked into the police station with her sister in law. Quick kiss from Jerry as she uh, left him. And it wasn't until, what is it, just before 1 o'clock in the morning that she actually came out of the door here behind me to face the crowds. And, uh, Penny, it was just the most weird thing. All throughout the day, huge crowds of people are built here 
are right outside the police station, many of them not really knowing why they were standing around waiting, but they were waiting for Kate McCann to come out. They were waiting for some development in this case. And, uh, of course, it's been in all of the newspapers. There's huge amounts of speculation, much of which we wouldn't want to go into on the programme this morning. And uh, people are absolutely fascinated by it. And they stood here with their young children, and they stood here and just waited and watched right until the early hours of the, small, of the morning. As you say, Jerry comes here today. He will get the same treatment from the police, a very long, laborious interview. And just a few weeks ago, the both of them sat down and told us just how difficult it is when people think you may well have killed your daughter. I just have no idea where this is coming from. I just think it's beyond belief, actually. Uh, I mean, you know, we're going through enough pain. And as I said, nothing will touch that. But for people to try and compound your pain by making up ridiculous stories, I just... Well, there's nothing to suggest that the police are about to name Jerry and Kate McCann as official suspects, although talking to people here, it would appear that under Portuguese law and the way that the judicial system runs here, if there is no obvious suspect uh, in a child abduction case or a case where a child disappears, quite often, as a matter of course, the parents are named as suspects. So uh, don't be too surprised if that happens, but at the moment, it's not on the radar, and uh, some of those stories in today's papers back at home may be slightly wider than Mark Richard, thanks very much. Well, former child protection officer and criminal analyst Mark Williams Thomas joins us now. Good morning. And Richard talked there about long, laborious interview, and that's a, another uh, way that the Portuguese police differ from the way that we deal with things in the fact that apparently it's all written down. Yeah, I mean, they, they haven't taped it, they've written it down, and that takes a long time, you know. She would have spoken in English, it would have then been translated into Portuguese and then been written down. So, you know, very, very difficult times for Kate last night, Jerry today, um, and he's going to go through, I'm sure, the very same laborious process that uh, Kate's just been through. Significant that the, that the McCanns are being questioned separately? No, I don't think it is significant. I think what we've got to remember here is that uh, both Jerry and Kate, and indeed her friends, they were the last people to have access to uh, Kate, to um, Madeline. Madeline. So they saw her last. And what we have to bear in mind is there's three elements of a crime. That's access and opportunity. Uh, and the motive. The motive is least important because people commit crimes for all kinds of different reasons. Who had access to Madeline on the night she disappeared? Who had the opportunity, and both the opportunity to gain access to her and the opportunity to dispose and get rid of her afterwards? So it's quite right that Jerry and Kate are focused, but four months into an investigation, this should have happened into the first weeks. And, and, and um, as Richard was also saying, he said, don't be surprised if they suddenly get named as suspects, which again, seems ridiculous. Why do you have more rights if you're a suspect? Well, it, th that's what the process is about. It's about enabling them to have more rights so that they can, uh, can deal with it in different ways. The law is so very different over there, and to make a comparison between their legal system and our legal system it just doesn't work. Uh, I think it's very difficult for Jerry and Kate. We know that a lot of this information and the reason they've been interviewed last night and today is as a result of their intention of coming back to England. And, and how much of what we're hearing is likely to be accurate? Oh. Mass, mass speculation. <laughs> There's a, every single paper has got a different line on it. Um, I think all we do know is that there is forensic results having come back, and I know that. The, the nature of those forensic results and how it's going to lead and what's going to happen from it, I think is completely up in the air. And reports that friends of the McCanns are saying that the couple are very worried that they're going to be set up, essentially, framed. I think, it, you know, it's an intense period of time for Kate, uh, particularly last night. She was very worried going in there, and I think going in there and being asked loads of different questions, and quite rightly, some very, very difficult questions. But those questions should have been dealt with in the very first stages. They should have eliminated them from the investigation or made them suspects in the very early stages, not four months into an investigation. So, in your opinion, are the police doing all they can? Have they done a good job? Well, I think it's very difficult to be, uh, to be very positive about them. I think it's far easier to be far more critical about them. I think what we've got to look at is for them to take on board the advice they've been given. They've been given a lot of advice now by the British police. Uh, and let's hope that they're working with the forensic results that come back using modern 21st century policing to solve this. Mark Williams, Thomas, thank you very much. Thank you. Time now is uh, 12 minutes to 7. You're watching the news hour here on GMTV. These are the headlines you're waking up to this morning. A video message from Osama bin Laden to the American people is to be released to coincide with the sixth anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. A new report says young children are eating so much salt they're suffering from high blood pressure. Health campaigners are urging parents to cut down their daily salt intake.
And hundreds of people have gathered in Medina in Italy to pay their respects to Luciano Pavarotti ahead of his funeral tomorrow. Now then, our next story will have every <laughs> mum out there gasping in horror. We're talking big babies, very big babies. The picture you're now seeing is of two newborns, both the same age. Amazingly, the big baby on the left, Sean Nicholson, was an eye-watering 14 pounds, 7 ounces at birth. Oh! What more? What's more is mum Amanda, who joins me now, gave birth naturally. Good to see you. How are you? I'm fine now. I mean, the mind boggles. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what was his birth like for you? It was a, a difficult birth. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, let's talk it through from the beginning. I mean, carrying him around, he's fast asleep, God bless him now. Yeah. Carrying him around, what was that like? It, I was quite in a lot of pain at the end of the pregnancy. I couldn't do anything. Couldn't go up the stairs, couldn't do my normal things that I would normally do, even when you are pregnant. Yeah, well, you've had two babies before, so yes. you've some experience with this. This, was, this you knew was different? Yes. But did you know why it was different? No, no. And did none of the experts say to you, it could be you've got a whopper in there? <laughs> no. Not a word? No. They That's... knew I was going to have a nice-sized baby, but not to the extent of the size that he was. Right. So, you, he was late as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was late, yes. So, by the time... I mean, how many days late was he? 11 days later, told so, me. So by that time, you were in real agony? Yes. You couldn't do up your shoes? Your kids had to put your no, shoes on? No, yeah, my kids had to put my shoes on. Yeah. I got in contact with the hospital a couple of times to say I was in pain. Mm -hmm. I went in a week before, yeah. and I thought I was being induced, and they sent me home. Found them a couple of days later, because I was in a, I was feeling a lot of pressure, and they said they couldn't do anything until I'd uh, my membrane sweep, mm -hmm. and sent me home after that. Right, but then you went back in. Yeah. Uh, and. We should stress, no question of a caesarean. No. No. This all happened naturally. How quickly or how slowly? Um, altogether, it was seven hours. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, just, I, I, I keep you, getting you lost know, for words. You know the question so. that you want to ask, how painful was it? <laughs> I can't describe it. Yeah, excruciating. You're yeah. in absolute agony. Now, by this time, they must have realised, surely, that this was a, a, big, a big child coming out. They didn't notice until his head was actually born how, how big he was going to be. And then what action did they take? <laughs> Um, they had all the midwives coming in to help me. So that became um, deliver. Him a well, we've got some footage of him just to remind people alongside uh, a baby of that's a little baby in the green room. We we hired special for the occasion just to show <laughs> the difference, right? Exactly the same age those two. Yeah. Now I've got the cl some clothes here. Shall uh, I hold up? This thank you very so much. Yeah, I presume this is this is for a normal baby, not normally in my line of business. This, but this is a uh, this is for normal baby, the one I'm holding. Penny's holding the one mm. that fits him. Yeah, that is quite a lot bigger, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. How? What are the prospects? Now? I mean, is he is he? Are you okay? Is he okay? Yeah, I'm okay and he's fine. Yeah. It took me a, a couple of weeks to get on my feet again, but I'm back to normal oh, now. Oh, bet. You, I mean, you you were lucky, aren't you? Because this yes. could have gone very badly wrong. It could have, and yeah. I did lose a lot of blood as well, so uh, I, I was very know. lucky. Yeah. And um, appetite? <laughs> Has he got a healthy one? Oh, he is. He's drinking quite a bit um, for his age. He's having quite a bit for his age. He has about seven ounces a time. Yeah. Which is well. A bit Congratulations, I should have said Thank that you. right at the start. Um, <laughs> well done. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, if you or someone you know has uh, given birth to a big baby, you can email us your pictures and your stories at our website, gm.tv. And uh, just before we go, some prickly babies, look. There. Oh, look, two little hedgehogs. albino hedgehogs who are never going to have to fend for themselves because apparently it's a bit difficult. OK. So they're being looked after. Let's get some weather now from Claire, who's in gorgeous red carpet.